This is a production of Cornell University. You look at a slide like this, you look at a, a picture like this, and you, the automatic assumption is, well, everything in this zone here is going to be really acidic. Okay? And everything in this zone right here is going to be really alkaline. But the truth is, if you take a look at an individual location, and we're going to take a look at an a location right in here in Indiana. Okay? Now this is the results of pH testing. And I don't remember what year this is. But this is basically a, a, a crop consulting company in Illinois. Okay? And what they've done is they've taken a look at all of their soil samples that have come in over a year. And they basically plotted out the pHs. Now, granted, this company could be getting soil samples from China. It could be getting them from Indonesia, wherever. But in all likelihood, most of the samples that they're getting are probably fairly local to Indiana or Illinois. Okay? The important point that I'm trying to make here is while we have maps like this that sort of talk about the pH distribution across the entire planet, the reality is when you start getting into an individual location, they tend, the pHs of this state tend to be around here. But the reality is they bracket a rather large range. Okay? So just because you're in Central Africa right here doesn't mean all of the soils are going to be at 5.3. They're going to be bracketing a larger range of pHs. Okay? Does that make sense? That's sort of the take home point of this slide. All right. Now, <clears throat> today's lecture is all about, the rest of this lecture is all about how we get the acidity. But I want to talk about, just to segue, why this is important. Okay? Now, this is a slide we're going to talk about, we're going to see this slide later on. Okay? This slide, and let's talk about the slide first. This slide, this picture right here represents a CE, the colloid, some sort of colloid. Now, this could be an organic colloid or a clay colloid. Okay? And the surfaces of this are basically those, this is a charged particle. So there is a certain amount of cation exchange capacity associated with this particle, right? Okay? Now, around this particle is the soil solution. And there is a certain amount of, of ions that are in this soil solution. Okay? Now, those ions are going to be reacting with this cation exchange capacity associated with the colloid, right? Now, as the solution, the concentrations in the solution change, the ions that are going to be associated with this cation capacity, cation exchange capacity, are going to change. Does that make sense? So as I start changing the proton concentration, as I start changing the acidity, I'm going to start changing the ion concentration in the soil solution, which is going to result in exchanges in the cation exchange capacity of the, the, the bases that are actually held on to the cation exchange capacity. Okay? This is why acidity is so important. What do you imagine? Just keep, think of this in your head. As the pH of this soil solution starts going down, what does that mean? It means the concentration of protons in that soil solution are going to start going up, right? Okay. What's going to happen to the protons that are in this soil solution? Some of them are certainly going to be leached out of the system. But what are some of them going to do? They're going to start exchanging with the bases that are on the cation exchange sites, which means those bases are going to go into the solution. What's going to happen to them? Some of them potentially will be taken up by plants, but much of them are going to be lost to the system. And what's going to happen to my reserve of bases that are on these cation exchange sites? I'm going to start losing them. So the consequence of the acidity going into this soil solution has huge implications for the nutrients of your soils. Does that make sense? Questions? No? All right. So let's take the next step. What is it that controls this pH? How, where does the pH come from? And it's basically broken up into eight different things. The first one is carbonic acid. Okay? That's the rainwater. And we'll talk about each one of these. The second one is biological metabolism. Organisms just doing what they do. The next one is the accumulation of that organ organic material. 
Third, fourth one is oxidation reactions. And I'm going to talk about two, two in particular, sulfur and nitrogen. Okay. The next one is acid rain. Next one is plant uptake of cations. Next one is aluminum. And the last one is the parent material, or I should say dissolution, the weathering of that parent material. OK, good? Let's start. Let's start with the first one, carbonic acid. Chemical reaction, not a big deal. Basically, what we're looking at here is we're looking at an organic molecule in the presence of oxygen. It's decomposing. It's being decomposed. We're respiring. Okay? And in the presence of oxygen, the byproduct is CO2 and water. Okay? CO2 is an abundant in the atmosphere. And every time it rains, there's water. Okay? There's actually humidity in that air as well, even when it doesn't rain. Okay? It turns out that CO2 and water can combine. They react together. Okay? That reaction is basically CO2 and water. And what it does is it creates a very weak acid. It's carbonic acid. Rainwater is naturally acidic. Okay, forget about acid rain. Because of the presence of CO2 in the atmosphere, when it rains, that water is going to react with the CO2 and it's going to make an acid, carbonic acid. Okay, that acid is fairly weak. The pHs are ranging from 5.5 to 6 ish, maybe 6.5, okay, 6.3. Okay, but it's a weak acid. And it goes back to my story, you know, my. I say this all the time. You give me weak acid in a million years, I'll weather away everything. Well, this is a really weak acid. The base does not completely disassociate. It only produces one proton for two potentials. Okay? But this is a proton. It rains. Where is that proton going to go? The soil solution. All right? So it's putting protons into the soil, which means it's going to be changing the pH of the soil. OK, the next one, biological metabolism. You start eating something, there's other byproducts besides, besides CO2 and water. We are not totally 100% efficient. There's waste products. And some of those waste products, here's that organic molecule again in the presence of water, of oxygen and water. One of those byproducts is basically organic acids. These are fairly strong. Okay? Their pHs are ranging from around 3.5 a much stronger acid than the carbonic acid. Okay? What's going to happen when the microorganisms start decomposing, or the worms start decomposing, or the termites start decomposing organic material in the soil? This stuff is going to go into solution. And I've now added another proton to my solution. I'm acidifying my soil. Make sense? Okay. The next one is actually the accumulation of organic matter. Now, this is a two-step process, but you have to sort of think about this. And this actually goes back to that, that slide that I had with the calloids and the soil solution. Okay. First is you part, start putting this organic mo molecules into the soil. And remember, I was talking about pH-dependent charge and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is a charged molecule. Okay. And if it's a charged molecule, what is it going to be doing? it's going to be attractive to anions and cations. Now, if it happens to be attractive to cations, base cations, and it starts pulling out bases from the soil solution, what's going to happen to the relative concentration of protons in that solution? OK, so think about this. Now, you draw this on the board. Here's my soil solution. Okay, and in this soil solution, I have a relative concentration of protons to bases. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, the pH is dependent upon this concentration in the entire soil solution. So what's going to happen if I start collectively pulling these out of the soil solution and leaving this behind? The relative concentration of this is going to do what? Right? So what is that going to do to the pH? It's going to increase the protons, which means it's going to lower the pH, right? Now, this is a two-step reaction. The first part of it is this complexation. 
And when I start changing the pH, I'm also going to remember pH dependent charge. As I start lowering the pH, what's going to happen to the calloid charge here? Remember pH dependent charge. OK, let's start with the easy one. OK, if the pH starts to raise, what's going to happen to those charges? Here, right here. Imagine this is the line right here. As the pH starts to raise, I'm going to have more hydroxide in the soil solution, right? What's going to happen? <coughs> They're going to pull this proton off and make water, and it's going to make this relatively much more negatively charged, right? Which means this molecule at first is going to start pulling in more base cations. Okay. Now if I start pulling in more base cations and I start increasing the relative concentration of the protons, what's going to happen to the pH? The pH is going to start dropping, right? And if the pH starts dropping, let's go right back to this. If the pH starts dropping, what are those protons going to do? They're actually going to go back. And then another proton is going to bind on here. So I, in fact, have two. And I now have a positive charge, right? Now what's going to happen to those bases that are here? They're going to go back into solution. But what's going to happen to them? If they don't get taken up by the plant, they get leached away. And so I've lost the proton. I've, because of this change in proton concentration, I've lost my bases. Does that make sense? So it's going both ways. OK, I got a couple no's. It doesn't make sense. Let's keep this here. Okay, here's my oxygen. Here's the edge, right? And I got a proton associated with it, right? What's going to happen when the pH starts going up? OK, if the pH goes up, my proton concentration is going to go down, but my hydroxide concentration is going to go up. Right? Makes sense? Hold on, Lily. Does that make sense? If this starts going up, what's going to happen to that proton? It's going to get pulled away, and it's going to combine with this hydroxide to make water. Right? So as a result, what's going to happen to the charge here? It's going to become more negative. Make sense? Okay. Now, if it becomes more negative, what's going to happen to these bases that are in solution? They are going to start binding. So we now have cation. We've increased the cation exchange capacity, right? Now, you've got to realize that more protons are coming into the system. Every time it rains, more protons. But there's a limited amount of bases. So I start pulling these protons out of, these bases out of, out of, out of solution. This relative concentration is going to increase, and I'm getting more every time it rains. So what's going to happen? Those protons are going to start bouncing off these cations, right? And as a result, my pH is going to start going down, which means my hydroxide concentration is going to go up. Uh, my proton concentration is going to go up. My hydroxide concentration is going to go down. This is going to become a positive charge. The bases are going off into solution. Where are they going to go? Some of them are going to get potentially caught by plants. Much of, them is, much of them are going to be leached from the system, which increases the loss of my bases. Does that make sense? Now, this is all happening at the same time. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.